camera to be looking at this one <laughs> okay <laughs> okay hey everyone um, so welcome to uh, this sort of impromptu live um, Dimitra and I uh, kind of decided to do this yesterday and uh, so we wanted to just really uh, talk with you guys about um, what it's like to be an artist um, today you know in in this time period with what's going on in the world and how strange it all is out there. Um, and also, um, just to kind of encourage you guys, because I know there's a lot of um, uh, anxiety and fears about um, the economy and you know the job market and you know a lot of things, because there's a lot of strange stuff going on right now, and how to really thrive as an artist during, during that time, during a recession. So that's, that's our, our heart today, to really talk about that. And if you guys ever have questions throughout this, we have somebody, um, uh, Constantino is on uh, the chat and he can help you, uh, to, we'll be able to get your questions and be able to answer them. Maybe pull your microphone a little Put bit. Put my mic it, down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think my earrings are too big for it or something. Like it. It's just like flipping up. Yeah. Okay, so there are people watching on, from what I understand, Facebook, YouTube is YouTube on there too. All right, YouTube and um, Vimeo on the direct link. So, um, is the chat just on Vimeo, or is it on? Is the chat on Vimeo? It's on everywhere. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So if you have questions, just leave your questions and. Um, we'd love to answer them like throughout this live and probably at the end we'll save time for questions. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this topic. Yeah, um, well before we get to, uh, you know, um, some, of the, some of the tactics or, or strategies that, that we know about um, on how to, you know, still do well and, and actually thrive um, during, uh, you know, a recession or, or downtimes or when there's a lot of anxiety out there um, because intuitively you would think well people don't buy art during those times um, people want to save their money and we've really found that to to not exactly be true and um, but before we get to that I just want to encourage anybody who's watching that really right now is the best time to be an artist and uh, if you follow history, if you look at art history and you follow um, the movements and you follow um, when there was a, a renaissance or a, 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 an enlightened time or an awakening or something that happened in culture that, that really brought about a renaissance in the arts, it was always following dark times. It was always following times of um, you know, when people were, were worried or concerned or, or darkness. Um, after every plague, there was a renaissance. Um, and you can, you can check that out for yourself and follow history. So um, we are sort of coming out of a worldwide, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to call it a plague, but you know, <laughs> a worldwide uh, COVID thing. And, um, and, you know, it stands to reason that we are on the brink of another wave of this renaissance. Um, I was telling people, um, you know, artists, I was talking with artists um, back in, you know, 2005, 2006, 2007, and I was telling them, you know, get in position because people were anticipating a recession. Um, you know, it is, I was hearing about it as early as 2008, and people were sort of anticipating because it goes in cycles. And people were anticipating that the house, the house market was going to bubble, was going to burst, and and people were talking about it. And I was telling people, 
get in position now um, to be an artist, line up your business, get your skills, uh, go to school if you need to, like do what it takes to get in position because when this thing turns around, you wanna already be selling, you wanna already be in business to, to sort of ride that wave. And it exactly happened like that. And I know a lot of people today um, that are free from their jobs and are like doing incredibly well as professional artists uh, because they got in position. So um, a lot of being an artist, I think, is reading the times and sort of knowing what's coming. Um, you know, don't you think like just for trends and stuff as an artist, aren't you always like looking forward? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. And when you say like artists are somewhat futurists? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, I think that we definitely, like, it's so important for artists to just bring whatever visions they have in their mind, whatever they're feeling in their heart, like, to bring it forward, because that's something the world hasn't seen before, and so I think those are especially important when we follow those gut feelings of, like, you want to paint something, you gotta, you just have to paint it, and um, it's, art definitely changes the world. Totally. Yeah. So if you are watching this and you are passionate about art, you, it is safe to say that you are a world changer and that your art needs to be seen. It needs to be seen now. It needs to be put on the canvas so that it can speak. Um, did you know that before something has ever, ever happened on the earth, it was first sung, written, or painted? True fact. So, um, big, whether it was a big invention that came or a big shift in culture, or it was, um, you know, uh, a time of peace, or it was when, you know, a tyrant was overthrown or anything, any uh, commerce, you know, some new avenues of trade, whatever happened uh, in the earth, it was first sung about, written about, or painted about. Um, uh, or, you know, in times of Hollywood, it was, it, it was in a movie. Uh, haven't you guys watched movies where you, you, maybe you watched a movie 20 years ago and you're like, oh my gosh, we're living that, you yeah. know, like that, that yeah. happened. Um, and so movies have a real knack for, um, you know, sort of putting it out there and then, and then we actually live it out. Um, so anyway, uh, art is extremely prophetic and it is extremely um, culture shifting. And, it, and that's why when you see uh, one nation sort of take over and oppress another nation, the first thing they do is throw out the art and abolish the art or destroy the art uh, because it's so powerful and it speaks into the generations. Uh, so really, if you, if you want to be an influencer, if you want to shape the world, if you really want to shift culture, if you don't like what you see out there and you want to change it, the very best place to be is an artist. Uh, and artists are truly the leaders of culture and they, uh, all other industries seem to follow. Um, uh, I think it was Socrates said, um, uh, Show me the lands of no. Show me what is he? The songs what is he of a people. Um, yeah, he said, "Show me the songs of a people, and I will show you her laws." Um, and what he meant by that is that it's the songs of a land that that determine what the laws will be or how the people will live politically. It's the art that leads politics. Uh, so, um, and that. Oh, sorry. yeah, no, go ahead. Well, that's why it's also really important to, like you were kind of touching on, but paint the future that you want. And, and through your paintings, you can create the world you want to live in. So if you're painting positivity and just beautiful things, then you're bringing that into the world. And if you're focusing on negative feelings or um, feeling like lack or any of anything that you're dealing with or you feel like the world's dealing with if you're painting those you're just going to bring more of that so it's definitely true with just life like whatever you focus on you're going to attract to yourself and art is super powerful like you're saying it's like it's magnifying um it's not just like your thoughts and words it's like bringing a vision to people and even now like with social media and just having thousands of people be able to see your art, it's even like a bigger voice. 
Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and, um, you know, I'm just going to like briefly share, um, you know, what I lived through. You know, I've been an artist for the last uh, 27 years. So I started, I don't know if I did the math right, but I, uh, I started professionally in 1996. So, yeah, yeah, 27, yeah. So, um, and and I've I've not I've not had a job since. I mean, that's that's all I've known is um, is how to how to be a professional artist, how to paint and and make a living selling my art uh, until we opened the school in 2010. And so when um, so to to be in a career in the arts with no other source of income, I've seen the world go through a lot of different things. I, there's been um, all kinds of different politicians that have come through, policies, uh, different economies. Sometimes it's, you know, fat city and sometimes it's leaner. Uh, and I know what I've had to do um, throughout the years to keep successful and to keep thriving and to keep going. And uh, I would say the biggest um, mistake I've made is in 2008, we were, you know, kind of um, riding this big wave of a lot of uh, making a lot of sales. And we had all our eggs in this one basket uh, with a dealer. So we worked exclusively with this dealer. And that dealer got us into all kinds of galleries and um, different places around the world. But it was always through this dealer. And I didn't know where my artwork was. I didn't know what galleries I was in. I didn't know how to contact these people. I had no, I just had my head down and just painted and sent out the paintings to the dealer. And, uh, you know, when the crash happened in 2008, uh, in that October, all of a sudden he called us and said, yeah, I, I can't buy any more art from you for a while. I don't know when I can. And our income went from, you know, uh, I mean, we were making really good money at the time to, to, you know, virtually nothing overnight. And so I had to hustle and um, we had to uh, sign up for every tent show we could, we could find um, and get, our, get out there. We had to, um, I was contacting galleries and I would contact a gallery and they would hear, oh yeah, I, you, you work with uh, this company, meaning the, the dealer, and then they wouldn't work with us because they didn't want to double cross the dealer. Um, and that happened a lot of times. And so we, uh, I went to New York Art Expo um, during this uh, you know, major, major crash and recession. And uh, we made all our money back, and so that was good, but um, we went there to try to meet new contacts, and nobody would work with us because this dealer uh, blacklisted us and, and wouldn't allow anybody in the industry to work with us um, because he was so upset that we were you know, going around him, but you know, he wasn't buying artwork from us. Anyway, it was a really difficult few years um, to try to find new markets and new ways, and so that was a huge mistake to just have uh, all of my business through one source. And since that time, we've really diversified and we've have, you know, made sure that we had multiple streams of income. And the coolest thing about art that you can't compare to really hardly any other industry is that you can do that while still maintaining um, uh, your passion and living your passion. Because think about it, you can sell t-shirts, you can put your artwork on all kinds of things, t-shirts, prints, you can do licensing. Um, you know, I know, uh, for example, during COVID, um, the puzzle industry went bonkers, mm -hmm. bonkers. Yeah. Uh, Dimitra licensed some of her artwork with, puzzle, with a puzzle company and they sold out of, uh, you know, sold out of it every time. Uh, same with um, those diamond paintings. Yeah. Um, so there's always something happening. There's always a way to make money through art. There's 
tons of ways. There's so many ways to diversify. There's so many ways to get your fingers in lots of pots. You can work with dealers. You can work with galleries. You can sell it yourself. You can do tent shows. You can do pop-up shows. You can do online things. You can um, license your work. You can work with uh, publishers and, and licensors. There's so many ways mm -hmm. um, to make money. Yeah. And if you have a job, what was happening to a lot of my friends is I could at least quickly do a production week, throw like 10 pieces together very quickly, zip out to a tent show and sell them and be able to pay my bills. Um, but I had friends that were working for companies and they would get fired or laid off and there was nobody else hiring in that industry and they would have to go very long periods of time just trying to make it off of um, unemployment. And, and this happened you know, at every um, sort of level of, of employment in, in, uh, in culture at that time. And I had lots and lots of friends um, that were in dire straits, uh, you know, when at least I could make something with my hands and, and go sell it. And um, so that was my experience. I actually lived through a really big uh, recession at that point. And it took us a while to catch up because we, we you know, were too uh, linear in our business. But once we did catch up and, and diversify, we did great. Um, and what, what do you want to share? You haven't lived, you haven't yeah. had your business through a recession. Not, not You lived really. through it and yeah. you pro it probably. Well, I was little. <laughs> yeah, you were little, it probably went over your head, but. Um, well, okay, I guess with, you know, COVID happening, that was definitely a scary time. And I know like, you know, a lot of small businesses had to close. It was like, it was just really, really weird times that none of us have experienced before. And it's happening worldwide. So it's not just one place, right. it's everywhere. Everywhere. And I was like complete, like, oh my gosh, I don't know, are people gonna buy art? Like, is this, but what I found is in 2020 and 2021, and this year, every year since, they have been my best years yet, selling originals. I mean, and prints too, of course, but I've sold way more these past three years than all the other years um, selling professionally. And I sold so much online because the galleries were shut down. No one's traveling, no one's going to the galleries to buy art, so, and most of them were closed. So it was just me like selling through social media and my website. And that's where I made the majority of my sales. And it was, what I learned is people, like they want to be around art. It's actually a necessity. Like we think it's not important sometimes, or it's not like you have to have art in your house. But I think for a lot of people, it's definitely important. It's when you have a really beautiful piece of art in your home, it like uplifts your whole mood yeah. and it changes the whole atmosphere and it brings a lot of peace. And it's a very spiritual thing. So I think art just proved to be very important during this time. And so I'm just going to hang on to that. And yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I think it'll continue to be for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, the, it seems like when times are uncertain and, and things get weird, people do, uh, spend their money more virtuously and they, and art fits into that category. Yeah. Uh, we found lots of people, even in 2008 and 2009, 2010, we found a ton of people that were buying art. Um, I remember I did a tent show literally the weekend after the uh, stock market crashed. So this show was in October. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it crashed that Monday. And, and I was, uh, I, I, quickly got in the show. It was a jazz um, festival because I, it wasn't even an art festival because it was like the dealer called Monday basically and uh, or maybe he called Friday. I can't remember but he, he and was like we're and I, I just immediately started googling you know local tent shows where I could I could you know sell some work and I got in the tent show like last minute and it was that weekend um, after after it crashed and um, and everybody was really, really freaked out. I mean, that whole week, everything in the news was 
you know, it was worse than the crash of 1920s. Um, you know, the banks are going to go bust and all these bailouts and the government was talking about bailouts and it was just like everybody was really freaked out and you would think nobody would want to spend money and everybody would hang on to their money. There was even people going to bank machines and emptying bank machines out um, and they had to like close down bank machines. Uh, people were filling up their gas tanks um, and and then the gas was hard to, to find. Which I mean, it was we're experiencing now too. Right. Yeah. It was really really crazy. And I was doing this tent show, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, nobody's going to even show up to this jazz festival, and much less buy, you know, art for, you know, two thousand dollars or 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 whatever I was selling stuff for at that time. And um, and so uh, we set up. And I tried to diversify as much as I can. I had like earrings, I had paintings, we had, you know, small paintings, we had big paintings and everything in between. Um, Do you have t-shirts too? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah John, John made handmade t-shirts. Anyway, we sold out of all the earrings, all of the t-shirts, and I sold uh, about $5,000 in original art. And we walked out of there with close to $7,500 in one weekend, and I was shocked. And, um, it, and people just wanted, they still wanted the art. It made them comforted. It made them feel good. And um, I, it's just the craziest thing. You think people don't buy art in those times, and it's not the case. They do. They maybe don't buy it uh, as much in galleries or you know, um, but they they still buy art, a yeah. lot of it. Mm -hmm. And most of our students, um, like if you're watching and you're not that familiar with us, we have an art school and we specialize in teaching um, artists how to turn their passion for art into a profession. And we do that through this uh, program called the Mastery Program. It's a one-year program that teaches you everything you need to know about an art career and from the skills, we teach you skills, how to find your voice, develop your style, build a personal brand, market and sell your artwork, and create an actual business in one year. Um, even with total beginners that have never really you know, painted before, and they actually uh, graduate selling their artwork. Um, so uh, all of our students throughout COVID, um, we were hearing just so many testimonials and so many artists that were selling their work constantly. And uh, it there was a huge uptick mm -hmm. um, in art sales. In people were home. Uh, they were they were you know remodeling. If you went to Home Depot or they were sold oh out of gosh. everything. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, because we were like building our house too. So, yeah, and yeah. remember we we were trying to like buy a refrigerator and it was it was on hold for like six Everyone months or something. Wanted to like just redo their home and and make it yeah nice. Yeah. So um, so all of that to say is right now is not the time to. Um, it's counterintuitive, I know, you know, uh, uh, when things feel uncertain, you're like, oh, I've been told my whole life that the starving artist, so the last thing I need to do is art right now. I need to, you know, get a real job and then a second real job or something like that. And it's not true. Um, it, it really isn't. The best thing, the best position you can be in is self-employed where you determine your own destiny yourself. You're not relying on an employer. You want to diversify. Even, even if you have a job right now, um, getting into art as a side hustle is one of the safest things you can do right now. Um, and there's so many ways to make money uh, yeah. through art. And uh, that, that is definitely what I recommend. So don't let up. Don't shrink back. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't put it off. Right now, it's time to expand, to um, delve in, to go deeper, uh, paint like you've never painted before, work, work hard at it, um, and, and improve your skills, um, find your style, uh, develop a brand and a voice. Um, really do whatever it takes right now to get into a career and and you will see that uh, even if it takes two years from now um, before things start to brighten up and the economy comes back and um, you know we get past this this blip, 
you will see that being in position and already in the market will just skyrocket you. It's like it's like shooting, you know, a rubber band. You're you it's it's stretching. It's stretching your faith right now to really keep at the art, but when things catch, you'll you'll really go far. That's and, a very good analogy. Yeah. Yeah, and and I've found too that because there's so many ways, it's all a mindset. Like if you believe in your mind that nobody can sell art right now, it's too hard. It's like everybody's you know, depressed and bummed out and nobody wants to buy art. If that's what you believe so you don't even try, you know, it's going to be your reality. But the real reality that's out there is there's a lot of people that, that, buy, that buy art. That We were just at um, a, a show in North Carolina, um, uh, the world's largest home decor show in High Point, uh, North Carolina. And they were selling, you know, $20,000 couches like like it was, I don't know, bottled water. It was crazy. Um, and there were so many people there, you know, buying, trading, um, selling, you know, it, it was... It was pretty impressive. It yeah. was really, I'm really glad we went. Yeah. yeah. And, and luxury things, like high-end, high-ticket things. Um, and, and everything in between. I mean, it wasn't all high-end, but it was, it was really, really cool. So um, I'm just telling you guys, don't shrink back. Don't, don't stop, don't, um, don't play it safe. Right now is the time you, you really wanna get in position. So, so what does that need, mean? What does that mean for you to get in position? What do, what do you recommend? What can an artist do today at, at multiple different levels? Whether yeah, it depends on where you're at, but I would say if you just, you're just getting started, the number one most important thing is to grow your skills, I believe, because if you want to be if you want to have any success, like you got to have a good style, you got to, um, you know, have a consistent style and be good as an yeah. artist. So, and the good news is like anyone can grow their skills. You don't have to have talent to be a really successful artist. You just have to learn the skills and practice them. And you will definitely like be good at something that only you are good at. So that's the good news about being an artist. I mean, it goes for anything you want to do in life. The more you practice at it, the better you'll be. Um, but yeah, that's like the number one starting point is to grow your skills and try lots of different ways to paint, learn all the techniques you can. Um, and then let's see. Sorry, I'm getting blank right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Prego, um, yeah. Prego brain. Yeah, but well, if you so already like, if you already have a style yeah. and you already have like that consistency, um, I think just the key is definitely keep painting, like create a really large inventory. And some artists get discouraged if they have like ten paintings sitting around, but that's totally normal. That's like nothing. That's really actually like low inventory. Yeah, you're not even so in business till you have thirty. You need like a lot of art to get started in this and you just have to start contacting like you were saying like multiple um multiple outlets for you to sell your work so if you wanted to do if you wanted to work with a licensing company or um even just reach out to individual companies and ask if they would be interested in like having some of your art as designs there's multiple ways to go around that but i think contacting and diversifying and just finding um galleries you want to work with, um, shows. For me, like when I got started, it was, I made a lot of money doing those 10 shows and that gave me a lot of confidence too. Um, especially when you're starting out and your price points are a little bit lower and more affordable, you'll sell like so much work. So um, I think 10 shows are always a great route to get started. Um, I mean, even now, if we did 10 shows, it's, it's good. Um, yeah, you else? can connect with um, local designers, um, interior designers. You can um, connect with uh, local um, decor uh, um, uh, shops. Um, you know, almost here in the South, ever, and it's probably true elsewhere, too. It just, I didn't see it a lot in Arizona. But um, like boutiques. And yeah, but all the boutiques, like every little town here has these um, home decor stores mm -hmm. and um, little boutiques and, um, you know, like these almost antique shops, 
like where they've refurbished uh, furniture and 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 it looks really high end, um, and they they would love to have really good decorative art or really good art that visually goes well with all their all their furnishings and and be able to put that on consignment. So connecting locally with what's around you um, is is another way to diversify. There's also restaurants that would love to hang um, nice, good sized pieces of artwork um, so that they don't have to uh, you know pay to have uh, artwork on their wall. It's it's there. There's a local restaurant here, um, which is where I got my start in art, actually. Uh, and I participated in uh, a show there and put my artwork on the wall. And I sold several pieces. And it really, uh, you know, got me going. And like Demetra said, gave, built my confidence. And it was it was how I really started selling my art as a professional in, you know, way back in 1996. So there's lots and lots of ways if you're kind of in that sort of, you've found, like Demetra said, you've sort of found your groove, you have some inventory, and, you know, um, maybe your skills aren't all the way where you want them, but you're growing, and you definitely can put some artwork together. Or you um, have, like, a consistent style. Yeah, I think a consistent that's style. The, the most important thing. Yeah. Um, then doing, doing these shows, connecting um, both online and, you know, in person, locally, in, in groups, and just connecting with people, uh, posting about your, your work, showing your process. Um, all of that is, is going to get you, uh, you know, known and sales and, and get out there. Um, and uh, I would say that if you are far along in your career, Look for more ways to diversify. So diversify your product, so you don't only have um, large scale, you know, originals. Uh, do do a small scale series. Um, start a commission program. Start a print program. Uh, diversify into other products. Partner with um, other companies and uh, license your work or. Um, uh, collaborate with other companies. I mean, you've done a lot of collaborations mm -hmm. with other companies, and it gets your it gets your name out there, which will open doors of opportunity, and it also brings in um, some income. So, uh, if you're far along in your career, my 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 number one recommendation is even if you're super busy with let's say three galleries. Um, you know, diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket of just galleries um, or just Instagram or, you know, one avenue of, of selling your work. Make sure you have um, multiple streams of income and you are diversified. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you mentioned murals too. Oh, yeah. But that's no, I didn't, but that's great. great way to make money as an artist and connect with like local places and restaurants. There's always, I think, like more and more restaurants and um, places like downtown, they, they want murals and art around for the public. So that's a great way to just get yourself known because um, everyone will see your art passing by. It's a really great advertisement. <laughs> Yeah, and um, we can also uh, take a few questions now. If there's any questions, um, we're happy to answer some questions. Um, Dean, are you going to text them to me, or are you just going to ask No, them? I, I, they can hear me in okay. here. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we have a question from um, Christine Nolan. Um, she says, some days uh, and weeks I feel I'm growing, uh, like I'm growing, and other days I get so frustrated and feel like I do nothing. Uh, does anyone else feel this? Hmm. I mean, I think, I think everyone goes through that, like ups and downs. And I think as long as you're trying something every week, like you're, you're working towards it, you have goals, um, then like you're not failing. I mean, you're, you're doing something. So, um, and even just, like taking an art class or just sketching an hour a day or just doing something with your art, like you should be very proud of that and you're, you're going to be growing your skills. Yeah, and I think um, the best way to grow is um, to not play it safe and to really challenge yourself, try new things, uh, experiment, or like Demetra said, take a new art class, um, try a new medium you've never tried before, 
Uh, growth happens through getting out of your comfort zone. That's true. Um, yeah. As long as you are, and what happens is, is when times are iffy or uh, feel unstable, people tend to want to stay where it's safe and, and secure and known, like the known places. Um, and the last thing people want to do is expand themselves, get out of their comfort zone, try new things. Um, and that's exactly what you need to do um, in order to grow. And that's what I'm actually telling everybody to do uh, when times are looking uh, strange or if you're uncertain, the best thing you can do is to get out of your comfort zone, um, push the envelope, try new things, expand yourself. It's not the time to shrink and become smaller and play it safe. Um, so that, that I've, I've learned that in my life. I've learned it the hard way. I've learned it the easy way. Um, I've learned it every which way you can think of. And I don't think I'm the only one that'll tell you that. It's counterintuitive. It feels like you want to just, you know, hunker down with hot chocolate and brownies <laughs> under a blanket and watch movies. Um, that's what it feels like <laughs> oh, you want to do. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not what you should do. Um, you should uh, expand yourself. Um, reach, reach out. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, say yes to opportunities. Uh, That's if, a big one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say yes to those opportunities. Uh, if you're afraid of it, odds are good it's what you're supposed to do. Um, if it's something that you, you have, uh, you know, I think you can just feel it. It's like you feel it here in your gut. It's like you want to do it really badly, but you talk yourself out of it because it feels so uncertain and terrifying. Mm -hmm. That is it, exactly what you need to do then. That is, that is a yes. That yeah, is a yes true. to that opportunity. And when you s start saying yes to opportunities, you attract more. And you're, that's how you get momentum. And I think that's like so important as an artist and to just be successful you want to get that momentum happening so it's always the hardest just in the when you're first getting started to just like get going I think that's the hardest part but then once you just start you know making all these decisions and just taking small steps then you start gaining momentum so we have yeah. So we have a question from Arella Tomlinson. She's asking, um, I think I want to develop a type of commission that is limited in terms of the client input, maybe similar to Dimitra's mystery paintings or Ellie's prophetic commissions. It's hard for me to say no to commissions because they seem like great opportunities, but they make me feel backed up in my ability to get my message out to continue with making my work. Have you noticed the public's desire for commissions increased during recession times? Hmm. I think yes. Like for me, um, past few years definitely had a lot more commissions. Um, and this year too. Um, and to answer, well, you're asking multiple things, but I think there's a way to like, I think you just can be a little bit choosy about who you have as a commission. I think it's good to have commissions open um, because it is good business and you're, you're really, you get to create something special for that person. Like I really enjoy commissions and creating something just for that person. And I find that really fun, but you can just make it clear that like hopefully the reason they're wanting a commission from you is because they really enjoy your style. So you should just, don't, don't get caught up in your mind that it has to be like just how they want it and just feel free to do what you want in the commission. And maybe you can write out like a contract or you don't have to call it a contract, but you can write out something that kind of gives them an idea of how much input they can give you. And then, you know, you can um, uh, determine the rest. Yeah, that's good. I, I think also you can... Um, just like Demetra said, structure your commissions, put it all in writing. This is, this is how it's all going to go down. Step one, step two, uh, and try to find something that fits in your expression and your voice, but that solves a problem for somebody. So you could choose, um, at this time to do, like, if you think about what is, 
um, what is the problem, and it has to fit your style or your your voice. So for example, people are concerned about health, right? So you could, you could, I'm not telling you to do this, but you could, somebody could, um, just like Dimitra did magical mystery paintings. So magical mystery paintings are for people who love magic and mystery, right? They, they want to be surprised. Magic's not in it, but it's fine. Oh, what is it called? Mystery dream paintings. Mystery dream paintings, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Magical mystery. <laughs> okay, mystery dream paintings. So that that is, um, so focusing on one aspect for somebody. So if it was health, right, you could focus on, uh, then, then your paintings could be about that. They're commissions, right, but they're open-ended because you're saying already they're, they're for this. Um, you could call them, you know, opportunity paintings, or you could call them, you know, um, uh, I don't know, destiny paintings. Um, you could call them what, whatever, whatever fits your, um, your voice so that you can create basically any painting, but, but they know that that's for them specifically. Maybe they give you input on color, mm -hmm. size, um, you know, and a couple elements, but really the rest of it you get to create. Yeah. Um, I have another question from Natalie Martin. Um, I teach paint and sip classes between seasons of productions. It's a great source of income, but does that undermine my standing as a professional artist? No, I don't think so. I think that's a great, um, a great like thing to do on the side for sure. Like I think that's super fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I mean, I Dimitri just taught a tea and landscape class a landscape class yeah. but over tea and sandwiches or something like that yeah I don't think like wine and and painting is a bad combination or I don't know I think that's a great and we, we've even talked about wanting to do that something locally like that so yeah I don't think it does um I think the only thing that would undermine an artist's art is is the art um so if your art people when they see your art is how they know um, sort of what level you're at. And that's going to be a combination of skills and how cohesive it is. So if your skills are pretty up there and your look is cohesive, it really wouldn't matter what you did. You could teach all the sip and dip classes you want. Um, your art will speak for itself and people will respect you uh, as an artist, you know, uh, doing yeah. that. So yeah. I think it's it's really your art that, that creates that... Um, elevates, you know, people's perception. So we have another question from Eleanor Birch. Uh, do you, you guys think you'll do a mural workshop? Oh, that would be fun. We could in the future. <laughs> yeah, we just need to go. Um, I actually have a place in mind right now that I think we should do a mural for. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Maybe we will. And uh, another question from Juan Casas. Um, what are your thoughts about standing out or competing against AI, AI arts or how we can integrate AI with our art? Well, actually, we did an entire podcast about this. We talked about it for like over an hour about that exact topic. And I think it, we're just waiting for it to be uploaded to YouTube. But really soon that's going to be coming out and we go into like a lot of it. I think that's a huge thing to talk about right now <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah there, watch for that it's coming out um you know probably within a week or so it'll it'll be out and uh it it we go into real depth about ai but i think basically i've seen a lot of things come through um i think there are ways to integrate it is the short answer and I think you can also just totally ignore it and not worry about it. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in it, what I don't think will work is if um, you only try to put, you know, all of your financial um, stability in selling AI paintings or selling digital art. I just, I don't think that those are you know, uh, things that you can, you know, necessarily count on using them and adapting them and utilizing them into, you know, painting, uh, is, is a possibility, but they're also not going to take over or, um, you know, like make artists obsolete. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. 
Uh, we have another, we have other questions. Would you like more? Yeah, I think we can have time for a couple okay. more questions. Uh, all right, Jamie Bistricki is, sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong, um, is wondering, uh, I feel like I'm not painting what my heart wants to paint. When I try to paint intuitively, I have no idea what I'm doing. Sometimes it works out and other times it doesn't. How can I improve my intuitive painting and trust in the process? It's well, a great question. Yeah, I think hmm, could there could be a lot of different answers. Um, you want to answer that? <laughs> yeah, um, I really love and value intuitive painting. And even though you would never imagine this, looking at you know the sources I make and then what I paint, that you would never go, oh, wow, Ellie's an intuitive painter. I actually, I would consider that myself that I am. Um, because the intuitive aspect can be at any point of the process. It can be in the source making. It can be in what you, where you decide to paint, what you decide to paint. It could be in the execution of that painting. It could be when that painting takes a left turn um, and you, um, you know, change, change directions in it. Everything is intuitive. Uh, the materials that you decide to use, the exact color that you, you know, go for at that time, the brush stroke and how you lay it down, that is an intuitive uh, act. Um, what brush strokes are you going to leave? What are you going to sort of blend in or, or you know, cover up? Um, all of that is intuitive. So I don't think that the only way to intuitive paint uh, to paint intuitively is to just ha not have a plan, stand at your blank white canvas and just see what comes out. Um, you're right. Sometimes that's not going to work out for you. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's just not going to be there. Um, and so I don't think you are no longer painting intuitively if you do make a plan or if you do use a source or you make a source because source making can be very intuitive. Um, so I, I, again, change it up all the time. Sometimes, a lot of the times, I, um, the in intuition and the intuitiveness comes to me when my gut wants to paint a certain thing and I just go for it and I, uh, I create that source. And I don't know why I'm making that source. I don't have a plan or a reason behind it. It's just my gut wanted to paint that image and put these things together the way I did. Um, other times I just start with abstract and I just paint, let's say intuitively, I don't know what colors are going to come out. I don't know what's going to be on the canvas. Uh, it might start, start with inks. It might start with spray paint. And then I look at it and I, and the painting tells me what it wants to be. That's intuitive. Other times, um, you know, I'm just kind of painting full on intuitively and I make a terrible painting and then it sits around for a few months and then I'll go back into it and it works out. So I think you can change it up. You can just paint what you want and not be bound to, um, oh, then it's not intuitive. Like use a source, don't use a source. You know, use a source sometimes. It's really up to you. And I think that um, you don't have to stick to, you know, being in the moment all the time. I really don't. Yeah. Um, Cheryl Gaudiano is wondering, um, would you guys do a workshop in other country in, in another country like Spain, perhaps? Yeah, totally. Yeah, we're I mean, definitely open. <laughs> one of the reasons why I stopped um, teaching the mastery program on site, um, you know, here at the school, is because I wanted to be uh, able to travel and do workshops and and do that. And we actually had that plan, and we had a workshop planned in India and in. Um, the Netherlands, and then COVID hit. And so we had to cancel those. And we haven't... Um, Since then, we just... Yeah, Dimitra got pregnant. Um, <laughs> I got busy. I don't know. So it is in the plans. Uh, we just don't have anything set yet. Um, and But our Mexico trip, which I won't be going on, but she is doing, like, it's basically a long workshop. Um, and that's January 27th. Through, through February 7th. Yeah in, yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, and there's only two spots left. Oh, wow. Two spots, that's two it. Two lucky people. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so, um, uh, yeah, we definitely, definitely want to do that. Um, is there any more questions, Dino, or? 
Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I have a question from someone, but I think I'll rephrase it a little bit. Um, what would you, what basic um, business tools um, would you recommend for artists just starting out? Basic business tools. That or strategies. Is a broad thing. We did give a lot of strategies today or a lot of ways that you could make money. Um, and depending on where you're at in your, in your art career, just, I mean, there's different answers, but, um, I mean, really, I think the best thing, if you aren't in our mastery program or you haven't heard about it, um, is the mastery program. It's our year long that course. That is the best business tools for people just getting started. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, we even have artists who had a style, they had a consistent style, but they wanted to get even better. And they took the program and they, it's completely, they thought they would know all the, you know, the techniques and foundations, but they learn so much and it's completely new for them. So I think the master programs for really anyone at any level, but the goal of it is to be a professional artist by the end. And we give like step by step, you know, how to have a career in art. And we start with literally just building your skills, finding your style and voice. And then you learn how to market and sell your work and build a website, put yourself in galleries. Um, we go through all of it. So I think that's really the best thing that you could do. Is take yeah, the I, I agree. I think if you're just getting started in art right now, uh, and I'm not just saying this because it's our program, but honestly, if you're looking at four years of art school, um, you know, I went to Savannah College of Art and Design, and one of our, um, you know, our, our media manager went to uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, and I think combined, we probably spent over, you know, 200000 I don't know. Like, it's crazy how expensive it is. Yeah. It's, it's dumb. So... Um, you know, if you think about that, uh, four years of art school, it's it's a big um, blockade for a well, lot of and people. And it didn't teach you how to have a career it in art. It did not. That's the main thing. Is that's what people need. That's what you want as an I artist. I had to figure that out on my own. Yeah, yeah I definitely, um, when I graduated, I started working at a bank. I mean, because they didn't, nobody taught me how to be a professional artist. So that's why we even created this program is because a lot of artists were asking me, how do you do it? How'd you do it? Um, you know, show me, tell me what you know. And I really wanted to help artists and I didn't have anybody that helped me. Um, I really, I tried, I tried finding mentors. I tried, you know, contacting people. And um, so I really wanted to develop a program that could help artists literally go with just simply passion. Um, and in one year, uh, and you know what our, our number one problem is, why not every artist in the universe takes this program, is belief. Most people, when we say, um, in one year, we can teach you from bare basics, you, you don't know anything, you've never even touched paint before, you just have a desire and a willingness to work hard, uh, we can take you in one year to, at the end of the year, be a professional artist and have an art business. People don't believe us. They just think it's a scam. It's not real. It's impossible mm -hmm. because nobody really is doing that. Yeah. There's nobody out there making that claim. But um, I'm thinking of this one student. I, I doubt she's watching right now, but it, it could be. Her name's uh, Taisha. Um, do you remember her last name so they could look her up on Harrison? Instagram? Is it Harrison? Harrison, yeah. So Taisha Harrison. You can look her up on Instagram, Facebook. Um, she was a complete beginner, never had painted before, but wanted to be an artist. Uh, and she knew somebody that had gone through the program and saw their success. So she, uh, she, uh, in fact, she went to the graduation. That's where I first met her. She went to a graduation that we were having for some on-site students and, uh, she joined the online program. And in one year, in one year, she, uh, started selling her artwork about halfway through the year. And by the end of it, and she had no skill at all, none. By the end of it, uh, she uh, was selling her artwork consistently and to this day is a professional artist. She graduated, I think, about three years ago. It was a while now. And I see her all the time in shows. She's constantly doing shows. She's constantly selling her artwork. 
uh, she's doing incredibly well. And she's not the only success story. There's tons mm -hmm. of success stories. Uh, hundreds of artists have graduated from our program and are enjoying a full-time career as an artist. Um, so it's, it's a really great program. Yeah. And it's, it's really the best thing if you want to get a start in an art career and you really want to do this, it's the best thing you can do. It's totally affordable. You can do it online on your own time and, um, and you're, you, you will have success if you do the work. If you don't do the work, then forget it. You're not going to have success. Um, but are you going to be too successful at anything else? Probably not. So if you're willing to do the work, um, you will definitely be successful. So I highly recommend that. Um, other, other tools, uh, for art, I think, I think an iPad's a great tool. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, an iPhone and iPad or, Apple you know, products. Yeah. Apple products. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, with an iPad, you can, you, you have at your fingertips, like all the information you would ever need, um, from YouTube to Google to whatever you can Google anything, anything you want to know, you could Google it. Um, something so, else basic is a website. Like some people have, they don't have websites and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm not selling my art. And it's like, you need a store. You need somewhere that people can pay and like buy your stuff. So, and you can yeah. remarket and retarget, <clears throat> um, through your website, collect emails. Another question. Um, so someone, B is wondering, um, any advice for someone who doesn't have much of an art support system, especially in these times, my family doesn't take it very seriously and none of my friends are artists. Yeah, that's tough. Um, well, that's why we've uh, developed the community that we have, uh, because there's a lot of people like you totally. that are looking to connect and, uh, our, we have a, um, uh, an art social app, uh, that's called, uh, Milan art. And so it's milanart.com and, uh, it's a social media. And so you can get on there and meet artists from all over the world. You can get your artwork critiqued. You can get lots and lots of help and support. Any questions you have, you can get them answered on there. Um, you can, you know, below, you know, uh, participate in the groups that are on there. Um, also we have art club, um, which is only $19 a month, and you have access to over 350 uh, videos, uh, instructional videos, how-to videos, um, inspirational videos, all kinds of things. There's a reality show on there that you can watch and become inspired, and there's contests every single month. That's the best part. So we put forth challenges, and you can win money. So um, we give out over a 1,000 in prizes um, every single every month, uh, yeah. in cash, uh, every single month. And I think there's five, five chances there's, to win. Um, yeah, five chances. And so, um, so that is a really great place to be. And the great thing about those challenges, uh, is it, it gets you out of your comfort zone. It gets you working, it gets you trying new things. And then all the videos that month pertain to that challenge. So if, uh, like we just had in October, um, uh, paint your fairy tale. Uh, so it was all about fairy tales. Well, we taught you how to paint, uh, see through wings. We taught you how to paint tiny faces in case you painted a tiny fairy. Um, <laughs> we, uh, taught you, I can't remember what else we taught you, but, uh, the, all the things that we teach you, um, are, uh, and demonstrations pertain to that, that challenge. So you can really grow and learn a lot. Um, everybody loves art clubs. So that's a great community to be a part of for not very much money. And you will learn, you will grow, um, and but you'll love it. You can also just join our app and it's free. So you yeah. can just have an account and post your work and get connected with other artists. And so you don't feel alone and you can have that support because it's a very supportive community. No one is rude on there. Everyone is, they're all in different levels, but everyone's just so supportive and kind in the comments. Totally. So I think it's a great thing to join. Yeah, and also you can connect with um, people locally. Um, if you live in a, a, a town or a city, you can look up uh, local art guilds and art communities. Um, that's another place you can go to your local art supply store and see what they got hanging on the walls, um, in terms of, you know, flyers or 
business cards. That's a, another way. Um, okay, well, I think we'll probably end this live now. And um, uh, hopefully that encouraged you, gave you some ideas. Um, hopefully you feel um, inspired to to really push hard in your art and and really get out of your comfort zone. And like I said, now is not the time to shrink back. Now is when you really want to, um, you know, delve deep into your art. And uh, if you are uh, looking for um, a career path as an artist and you want to know how to get there, I highly recommend the Mastery Program. Mm -hmm. um, we've had tons of success with it. <laughs> And uh, lots of artists, tons of testimonials, uh, you know, love it and have really grown from it and have succeeded. So um, you can go to our website. Um, there's a whole uh, landing page about it. In fact, tomorrow, if you're really interested, um, Dino, can you put that link in the chat? Uh, Dino is going to put a link in the chat um, that will take you to uh, a Calendly where you can book um, being on a Zoom call with Dimitra and I tomorrow. So that's at, it's at 1, right? Um, it's 10 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, so, so 1, 1 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just going to be a Zoom call, a big group Zoom call, where you can ask us questions um, about the mastery program. Um, and we'll just, you know, answer your questions. And so that's what that Zoom call is all about tomorrow. Yeah. And it'll, of course, be live, uh, you know, a Zoom call. Yeah. Um, so uh, that link that he just posted is how you get on that. And... Okay. So okay. the link is not posted on Facebook. Also, you could just send us a DM, like either of us, and yeah. we'll send you the link. So you can just message me personally on Instagram or Facebook and, or Same her, with me. Yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll send you the link. So Dimitri Milan, Ellie Milan, and um, yeah, and so maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, and if you sign up for the mastery program uh, between now and the thirty first of October, you can start on November first. Very exciting. Um, if you don't sign up and you sign up after, then your start date will be December first. So. Uh, that is also very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be in with uh, all the October people um, for that, or all the, I guess it's the November start people. So you have like a class to be with. So that's your community. That's the people. Um, in fact, on this Mexico trip, you know, I'm just going to put this in there real quick. I know we're going to end it. But um, on this Mexico trip, I was just, uh, for the artists that are coming, um, it's so interesting because Yola, she graduated from the program and she's going on the trip. Um, and uh, she knows some of the people that are coming on the trip because they were in her class. They were in, they went through the mastery program at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it's so interesting. If you join the mastery program, you're going to meet tons of mastery students um, that are right there with you doing all the same things that you're doing. And they're still friends today. So a lot of the people that, that have graduated. So it's, it's a really great community. Okay, guys. Well, this has been really fun. I hope you're inspired. Um, I hope you um, are, are feeling really good about your art and your choice for a career in art. And um, we will see you when we see you. Yeah, hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>